You know, I've been around for a while. I've met some interesting people. Done some crazy things. So you'd think that there wasn't much that could take me by surprise. You'd be wrong. The world is full of stories and science and things that amaze and confound me every single day. Incredible mysteries that keep me awake at night. Some I can answer, and others just defy logic. In Scotland, over 50 dogs mysteriously plunged to their death from the same bridge, leaving scientists baffled. Feet just left the ground and they're straight over. Are dogs suicidal? Or is a sinister force at play? Ever wonder what your pet is thinking? Well, we all know, don't we? I mean, I mean we think we do. We, we talk to them and they respond. Watch. Fluffy, you want to eat some cookies? Hey, you want to go for a walk? Fluffy Wuffy. Young Bill, do you know Bill? That's all it seems. He thinks about food, walkies, and he's thinking about how much he loves me. That's all it takes to make him happy. But not every dog is like Fluffy. Others have secrets, secrets and thoughts so deep and dark, they're worth dying for. Did you say something? <laughs> March 2005, Dumbarton, Scotland. Donna Cooper is on an outing with her daughter and the family dog, Ben. They're exploring a 19th century country estate on the outskirts of town. We'd been out for about two hours, and then we were just finishing our walk when we came up the stairs and came to the bridge. Donna doesn't want Emma wandering off, especially near the bridge. But, busy with her daughter, Donna takes her eyes off the dog. I'm always aware of bridges, but generally you just say to the dog, come or heal, and they're generally right at your heel and they don't go anywhere. Suddenly, Ben rushes onto the bridge before Donna can react. She still doesn't understand why the dog jumped. He wasn't a working dog or anything, but he was very intelligent and we had him properly trained. No, he was a very happy dog. I clearly don't understand why he done it. What makes Ben's death even more puzzling is the fact that it wasn't the first. Since the 1950s, over 50 dogs have leapt to their deaths from the Overton Bridge. Everybody has their theories. Everybody has their stories and their ideas. It is strange that many other dogs have done it as well. My goodness, this is awful. Dogs taking their own lives. Doggy depression. Hound Harry Curry. I mean, what's going on here? I mean, they didn't even leave a suicide note. Seriously, this has got to stop. We, we, we have to help, but how? There's only one way. We, we have to get to the bottom of this and find out where these deeply troubled minds went wrong. Tell me about your puppyhood. But therapy is good for you. Why did Ben die? Do canines possess complex emotions that make them want to end it all? So if dogs can't commit suicide, why did Ben jump off the bridge? Could there be some other explanation? Psychic investigator Archibald Lowry has a monstrous theory about the Scottish dog's suicides. He's convinced Overton Bridge is the scene of a heinous crime with origins in the distant past. He thinks the clues to the mystery are still there. Psychic memories, all memories, are locked onto the place of the Earth's surface that they were, they were generated. Lowry and his partner, Francis Ryan, believe dark, Supernatural forces may be behind the deaths. For the first time, they will try to communicate with the ghosts of Overton Bridge and find out what happened. Um, I said, Francis, let's see if we can pick up anything, because nobody else is coming up with any decent ideas at all. On the bridge, Francis goes into a psychic trance. I feel a mist starting to come forward. Yeah, 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 um, yeah. 
it's coming in a haze at the moment. Yeah, yeah. I'm not getting a full figure. I'm, I feel like a haze. It's like feeling energy coming in. Yeah. Almost immediately, she has a chilling vision. She said, I'm seeing a big black horse. I feel he's coming forward in a different way. Yes. On the horse, there is a rider. He's a young man. Francis sees a young man named Edward, who lived in Overton Estate over a century ago. But on this day, he was on a fox hunt that took him across Overton Bridge. Very strong will, very powerful. Edward is blowing his hunting horn, and the dogs are hearing that and following it as dogs do. But there's something special about the horn. The pitch is so high, only dogs can hear it. And it's giving out a sound which we can't hear, we humans can't hear, because it's designed to make a sound for dogs, to get dogs to follow the hunt. Suddenly, one of the dogs goes berserk and attacks the young man's horse, causing it to rear up in panic. He's given the feeling of tumbling and, and falling. Tumbling, yeah. Tumbling and falling. Yeah. Edward is thrown and killed in the fall. He slides back down the horse, breaking his back on the corner of that bridge. So cruelly, so quickly, cut down in his prime, because of the action of a dog. He hates the dogs. Larry's seance on Overton Bridge has led him to a startling conclusion. Edward and his horse are still there. Larry believes Edward's ghost is not only alive and well, he's still blowing into the hunting horn that only dogs can hear. But now he's using it for a diabolical purpose to lure dogs off the bridge. Are these dogs somehow hearing this blowing of this thing to follow him and leap to their deaths? Is a vengeful ghost causing dogs to jump off a Scottish bridge? Animal psychologist Dr. David Sands agrees something is luring the dogs off Overton Bridge, but it's not supernatural. It's not suicide, it's death by misadventure. He's convinced the animals are being led not by a ghostly horn, but by one of the most powerful sensory organs in nature, their noses. With a sense of smell perhaps hundreds of thousand times more powerful than ours, once a dog picks up a trail, it's going to be motivated to, to follow it and find out where it's leading to. What smell could possibly cause a dog to jump off a 50-foot bridge? Dr. Sands is certain there is only one, an odor so powerful and overwhelming, canines simply can't resist it. The mink, a creature dogs instinctively hunt. The mink has an anal gland that produces a, a sort of scent that is so strong you'd probably smell it from about half a mile away. It's an interesting theory. Minks were farmed here until the 1960s. The doctor thinks their wild relatives are still around, and dogs know it. Minks are territorial, they leave scents, uh, dominant males leaving the scent for other animals to pick up. But if dogs want to chase mink, why are they leaping off the bridge instead of running around the side? Dr. Sands visited Overton Bridge to find out. But once I got to the bridge, I sort of got down on my hands and knees and thought about it from a dog's point of view. He quickly discovered the answer. Dogs can't see over the wall. They have no way of knowing they're on a bridge. Because of the height of the stone wall on the bridge, they're seeing a wall, they're not seeing a 50-foot drop on the other side. It's a convincing explanation. Canine curiosity and a powerful hunting instinct literally drives dogs over the edge. A recipe of cues and signals and scents that have caused the dog to behave quite naturally, but for the end result to be disastrous. Did the hounds of Dumbarton jump to their deaths because of the scent of wild mink? Were they lured off the bridge by a ghostly dog eater? Or were they so depressed they couldn't go on living? Weird.